Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I'm here with Matt, and we're here with Mark Mac McKinnon. Did That's I say that right? Yeah. Um, he is the, the brains behind uh, BESM, as well as the latest Kickstarter that's out, uh, uh, Anime 5E. Uh, thank you, sir, for joining us. Oh, I really um, appreciate uh, you having me on again. It's great to be back. So uh, I'll pass, uh, pass this to Matt. I know he has some questions he wants to ask first. Well, let me start by saying that it is a real pleasure to talk to you. I am a big fan of Bessem. I have played or at least read all the editions. So oh, it's, that's fantastic. Awesome. it's fantastic to see you back. And um, I, I love the new edition of Bessem. Thank you. It's pretty exciting. We're really happy with how Best and Fourth Edition did. It, uh, you know, it's a very successful relaunch on the Kickstarter, and then since then, it's been doing really well. Either you know through drive through, a lot of you picking up digitally, and uh, you know it's in stores all around the world right now. So really happy with how that turned out, and then that morphs into what we're doing now with Anime Five E. That's great. That's great. So, um, Anime Five E. Why anime plus D and D? What what uh, inspired you there? Well, I mean, I, I've started on D and D as most gamers probably did around my age, uh, back in the eighties, uh, starting <laughs> on that. So D and D's already been very familiar to me. Over time, of course, like many gamers, moved on from D and D and and didn't engage in it quite as much when I my eyes were opened up to different types of gaming out there. And so D and D is great for what it does, and it does what it does very well. Uh, but for me, I moved into more narrative structures of games. So creating uh, Bassem uh, in its first edition back in 1997, and then kind of going along the the more narrative, more micro style games uh, since then. But of course everyone is at a different point in, in what they like gaming and what i enjoy which is a very rules light more narrative system someone else might like super crunchy lots of tables and then of course there's always a spectrum in between so there's a reason why dungeons and dragons is the most the world's more popular role-playing game everyone loves it everyone plays it except for the people that don't but it is very very popular and so while uh when we publish big eyes small mouth the Bessem, we think it's a great game we would love to have millions and millions of people playing it but not everyone is and if some people are playing uh their dungeons and dragons game and love dungeons and dragons that's what they want to play then who are we or or anyone to say you're playing the wrong game switch games to something else so instead of trying to force people to do something that that they're not going to enjoy, they want to play D&D &D, or they want to play fifth edition style games, then why don't we t customize what we have for them so that we give them some of the tools that we've used in some of our other games, uh, like a point buy system, like an effects based system. And we layer that on top of the fifth edition offerings so that it expands what they're familiar with and gives them a flavor of some of the things that we're going forward. We think that that, that combination is like, chocolate and peanut butter, right? We think they're better together. Uh, and so I think it's something that that people can really enjoy if they're anime fans and Dungeons and Dragons fans, then it's a great combination. And and hey, even if they've never played D&D &D before, they might be brand new to gaming. Maybe they they play uh, other games and they, they've never played D&D. &D. Uh, this still might be a good game for them. There's something about the, the class-based system and the D20 roles. Maybe that's exactly what they're looking for. And so why would we say there's only one game that we want to support and that's and that's the trisat system through Bessem. that's the only game we're going to do why not give other people what they might want to do sure okay that makes perfect sense so just to be absolutely clear this isn't a Bessem game this is a D, &D game that's right and that yeah so if we, we we step back i mean back when when we did Bessem second edition and then we ended up with the D20 boom that happened in the early 2000s, we thought, well, why don't we do a Bessem version in D20? And so we called it Bessem D20 at the time because that was very much what it was. Right. It was yeah. a D20 version of Bessem. The reason why this is called Anime 5e and not, I guess, Bessem 5th edition, I mean, which would be, <laughs> first of all, confusing given that we just came out with Bessem 4th edition, but but this is not a a D and D version of Bessel. That's not what this is. This is taking the elements that we have of an anime role playing game, not Bessel, but an anime role playing game, layering it on top of Fifth Edition and calling it Anime Five E leaves no uh, room to to maneuver on what this is about. This okay. is Fifth Edition, and this is anime, and it, it's not Bessel. And okay. so they're very distinct games. All right, good. 
Good. That's very clear. Thank you. <laughs> so you have 14 classes and 14 races in this book. Um, uh, can, can, you, can you give us examples of, of what we're going to, what, what options players can have with this book? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So because this is a fifth edition game, Yes, people can play their fighters and their wizards and rogues, or they can play their their elves and their their dwarves and, and halflings if they want. I mean, those are very fantasy and it's high fantasy, Tolkien-esque fantasy. And those are all from the standard fifth edition uh, variety. And they can be used in anime 5e as they are, no problem. But what we do is we, we presented something that was a little more anime oriented. So we have slimes that you can play. For example, I want to be a slime race. Mm -hmm. I want to be a, a cat girl, Nekujin race. And then we also kind of go a little bit different and, and kind of to, to push the boundaries of what D&D is or, or what fifth edition can be. So we have an arch fiend, but this is a huge creature. So this these are things that stand like 20 to 30 feet tall. These aren't your standard players. So, you know, the, the idea of you're sitting in an inn and someone walks in with an adventure, well, these things aren't sitting in inns. And so if that's your <laughs> style of play, what do you do if you're a 30 foot arch fiend and part of an adventuring party? Um, right. So we have different different sizes race. We have fairies. So, you know, they're, they're just a few inches tall. We have uh, of those races, 14 different ones that offer a, a good variety across standard and common anime tropes, as well as less common things. And then from the class point of view, what we decided to do is when we were doing anime 5e, we did not make this a combat focused game. Now, traditional fifth edition is often focused focus around the dungeon crawling. N not exclusively. You can play a, you know entire four, six hour game of D&D &D and never roll dice once and never step foot in a dungeon. But I know that the standard way of playing it is all about, uh, you know, killing the the evil creatures and taking their stuff uh, that's not the assumption that we start with anime 5e we have the tools to do that but instead we offer things like a broker so these are someone that uh they, they acquire things they might be running a merchant shop they might be able to to trade and, and deal with stuff you can almost think of them as uh characters you'd see in in any genre these are merchants effectively, but they are merchants that have that special unlock ability. We also have something very specific to anime. So an Isekai student. So this is someone that specifically came from another world, probably Earth, landed in this fantasy realm. And so they they are still students. So they, they might be wearing the school uniforms uh, and a lot of their their abilities and features as you go forward are going to be dictated kind of around what's common for these types of students. We also have dynamic spell binders. So D&D has their wizards and their clerics, which has a very um, outlined list of spells for spell casting. Well, dynamic spell binders are more fluid. So you could use the, the standard fifth edition spells, or you can do something more open and say, well, I, I uh, have uh, power over gravity. That is my that is my ability. So all of my magic is going to be very free flowing about gravity. We have uh, benders, benders, you know, uh, classic airbender, firebender. But you can also be uh, a bender in a very different type of elemental way. Uh, what if you were a a truth bender? or uh, something that's that's a little non-classical, like a bloodbender or something like that. And so what we do is we, we took the what you can do in fifth edition and brought it up to an anime level, but they also expanded it in ways that serve as kind of examples of what people can do, rather than saying, well, clearly this character, this race or this class is from show X. We wanted to, to expand the boundaries because of course, as we all know, Role playing is unlimited. You can do whatever your imagination has, and so coming out with twenty eight choices for that, we thought was a great way to start anime five e. So, is the setting um, like? Can you let's say someone says, uh, "Hey, can you can we do cowboy bebop?" Uh, is there rules about like uh, futuristic equipment or settings or futuristic settings? Yeah, and, that, and that's a great question because we did Bessem D20, we did a multi-genre approach. Bessem is a multi-genre game and we said, well, let's do multi-genre D20. The approach we did differently with anime 5e is this is fantasy. Now, someone asked me today on the Kickstarter says, well, well, what is fantasy? And that's up to everyone's individual. Is it is it high fantasy, low fantasy? Uh, there's a big difference between Tolkien and Game of Thrones. Uh, there's also a difference between, well, what about science fantasy? You know, Vision of Escaphonite, can you have Mecca? Uh, yeah, we have rules that you could you could do these types of things. You can build these types of creatures. In. There's science fantasy, steampunk fantasy. Fantasy is, is what you point to and say, this is fantasy. <laughs> the, the base assumption is still kind of the, the standard 
role-playing Tolkien-esque type fantasy. I mean, that's what's what we're thinking of. And when people think of fantasy role-playing, they think of your elves and your dwarves. And we want to stick with the anime version of that. So it could be, uh, you know, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. You know, that anime show, you know, has a different spin on goblins, a different spin on slimes, but it is still considered fantasy as opposed to people are driving around in, in sports cars and they're going up to space into rocket ships. You could do that, but that's not what the focus was. We wanted to, to focus on what we consider fantasy, but the rules are just a, a, a foundational framework. You can do anything you want with it. Oh, okay. Okay, excellent. And so let's talk about, there's something... You mentioned something in, in this called uh, uh, defects. Uh, what is that exactly? Uh, they're, they're really like flaws, uh, effectively. So if you were to say, well, I want a character, but I, you know, one of the defects that I have is, and it's very anime, is I'm always being hounded by tons of girls, guys, others, whatever it is. So I'm constantly being hounded by other people, and it's and it's a, a defect because you don't want that. So you'd, that would be worth... Uh, some sort of balancing factor that to say, well, if I'm going to accept this disadvantage of some sort, then I should receive some sort of advantage of some sort. So if you take a defect, it's it's effectively negative points. A really simple way to bring it down is is, is the way the say in fifth edition the races are. Well, this race has maybe a plus two to their constitution and a minus one to their charisma. Well, that minus one to charisma is effectively a defect. And so what we do is we set up parameters. What if you're what if you're wanted by the law? Well, if you decide that you're going to be an outlaw uh, in a fantasy world, that's a disadvantage. That's a defect. And so you, to balance that out, you're going to have other advantages to balance the defects that you've decided to, to burden your character with. Oh, that's really excellent. Um, what about, you mentioned this, you mentioned, the book mentioned something about, about monster creation. Uh, can you explain that a little bit? How does, how does, what does the book contain to give you tools for game masters to create monsters in this, in this book? Sure. Sure. Well, the great thing, of course, because again, this is a fifth edition game and we provide a, a layer of, of an effects based point based system of features that you can have and you can create monsters or companions or player characters using the exact same system. But you can also just import standard fifth edition monsters exactly as they are. So take something like like a cobalt. Uh, so you can say, well, this is the fifth edition version of a Cobalt, and I'm just going to use the fifth edition from the Monster Manual Cobalt exactly in the game as your uh, opponent. But what we do is we break down and we show, well, here's how you create a Cobalt in Anime 5e. It's the same Cobalt. The difference is, is we have slightly different ways of, of describing what they have. So, for example, because the Cobalts are short, they're small creatures, we give uh, certain parameters if you're small that that fifth edition standard doesn't so if, if you're if you're really really tiny you're not going to be moving at 30 feet around the way a standard character does so if you're short you're going to move more slowly and so with the parameters that we've done is we've taken the cobalt as an example and we have then statted out the same cobalt using the anime 5e system so you can use the anime 5e cobalt you can use the DD cobalt it is the same cobalt it's just how the stats are presented are different and we present 14 different monster manual monsters using the anime 5e system so people can see how things are created from there so they can start creating them from scratch if they want to but of course the great thing about fifth edition is the incredible amount of wealth of adventures monsters um just magical items there's so much out there that players can get access to and import directly into their game either as examples uh and then customize themselves or use them as they are written uh, in a third party or was it the coast product, for example. And so that's one of the things that we think is going to be great about anime 5e as opposed to when we did Bessem, obviously we want to give as much material as we can, but, but Bessem is fourth edition is a newer game. We don't have 300 publishers producing Bessem material. So you have to maybe create a little bit more on your own where anime 5e, there's a wealth of stuff out there at your fingertips if you want it. Okay, so let's talk about the the I guess the technical aspects of the of the book itself. Um, do you have an idea about how many pages it would be? Uh, it looks like it's gonna have. Does it, is this gonna have the same art team that uh, that was behind the Bessem games as of late? Yeah, so the the games are done. Uh, both the 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 core games, the game screen, the folio, everything's finished. It's it's in the final playtesting slash editing uh, phases. And yeah, a lot of the art that we use is coming from our other anime games. Like if we have a great picture that of a, uh, let's just say a slime or a goblin, 
well, why would we want to re-get that picture if we ever had a re good, really good one? So yes, all, some of the art is imported in from Basin that we've used there, as well as some new art that we've commissioned specifically for Anime 5e, like the, the gorgeous panoramic wraparound cover that we have. Uh, a lot of the monsters uh, in the game are, again, uh, very much fifth edition. So they're new anime versions of a kobold or anime versions of an ogre, for example. And so the, there is a similarity in the anime team, like with the, per, the person that did the, the cover for Anime 5e, we've used her with when we did Best and Fourth Edition. And so we, once we find people we, we work with, we, we'd like to continue that, uh, that working with them. And so there's a number of artists that cross over between both of them, either with original images or images that we've used in the past. Excellent. Um, Matt, do you have any follow-up questions? Are you, are you good? I'm good. Um, I just like to say that it's it's fantastic to see you uh, back making games. Thank you, and I really appreciate it. it was uh, you know at a time when when my previous company went away because it couldn't be sustained, and I had to step away from the industry uh, yep. for a little bit. But of course, as a game designer at heart, uh, I love playing with mechanics. Uh, and getting back into the industry with board games was was a great way to get back in. But of course, my my heart is role playing games, and so it is wonderful to be back playing back in anime role playing realm, whether it's Bessem uh, or whether it's Anime Five E. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the next uh, little while holds. Excellent. So are we. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so before we wrap up, um, uh, Mark, would you like to, to share uh, uh, where can people find more information about not just uh, this project, but also Bessem, uh, your website and the name of your company? Yeah, absolutely. So we're Discami Publishing Company, or Discami is is a short form, D-Y-S-K-A-M-I. And uh, Discami is is all the socials, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and whatnot. If you go to anime5e.com, you'll go directly to the Kickstarter link for uh, Anime 5e. If you go to Besom4, that's the number four, Besom for Life, Dot life, then that'll bring you to all the information for best and fourth edition. Of course, discami.ca, we're a Canadian company. So you can go to discami.ca and you can get links from there for everything. But if you want the quick links, it's anime5e.com, bestm4.life, and uh, discami.ca. Excellent. So we'll put all those links in the description below. Uh, thank you, Mark, for, for uh, sharing us all about, about this book. We're very excited about it. Um, and uh, to our viewers out there, thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good day. Thank you.